you've talked to uh, to Kathy and, and uh, John, and you know you're you're sort of convinced that boy, if you put a credible plan together, they'd actually get behind it. So, what does a credible plan look like? And that's what we're going to talk about. And a, a credible business plan has has really two stories. One is the story of the business, and the other one is the story of the money. People are often pretty good at telling the story of the business. And what I observed is they're not so great at telling you the story of the money. So uh, Liz Pyle, who is a uh, consultant here in town, is going to uh, go through the story of the money. And again, we're not going to tell you how to write a business plan. There are templates for writing business plans. They're easy to find. Um, but writing a business plan is about borrowing credibility. So unless you have started a business before, cashed out, made a lot of money, you're going to match dollar for dollar every investor that's going in, that's a pretty rare occurrence. So what are you doing? You're a Darden student, maybe you worked at Deloitte, um, or you're an entrepreneur, you've been working in a, in a business here in town, and you're going to write a business plan, and it's all about credibility. Um, that's the purpose of writing a business plan. It's convincing people that they should give their hard-earned money to you and that you're going to give them money back. That's all it's about. It's not about saving the world. It's pretty much not about doing good. It's really about doing well. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Liz, <coughs> at least for the first part. Well, it's been, been quite a day of getting lots of information. And um, I know some of it may be confusing to you. And, and now we're to the part where we have to bring it all, all together. And um, before we do that, though, I sort of just wanted to, Philip and I have done this presentation in all sorts of different ways. And we've tried to be a little bit innovative in, in how we can present it. And one of the things that was really brought out today is the fact that when you have a business, you have to be very passionate about that business. And that's a very important point. But at some point, sometimes that can sort of get in your way. And, and just before I go, have anybody here heard about the, a really nifty, and some of you may be a little young for it, uh, a children's book called The Velveteen Rabbit? Okay. And in that story, the little boy has a rabbit. Here's my rabbit. <laughs> Except it's a teddy bear, because I collected teddy bears. But he's a rabbit for tonight. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and, and you know, in, and in that story, just like an entrepreneur, you love this little rabbit. You know, you think and you work hard. Hang on. <laughs> I need to get my rabbit up here, too. You work hard, you know, you, you nurture this little rabbit, and he gets worn, and you really love this rabbit. And you finally get to the point where, you know, I really, he's cute, I really want to bring this to the marketplace. I really want to do it, and this is my rabbit. And so I'm going to go look at the, the VC. And I'm going to go, hey, Sounds this like is my, VC. yeah, you're the VC. <laughs> this is my rabbit. Isn't he cute? Yeah. But he's my rabbit. And I've worked so hard. I've done all the research and I've done everything and I know the marketplace. It's so nice. It's a nice little rabbit. But he doesn't see the same thing I do. What he sees is Frankenstein. <laughs> or, or the other inanimate object that was supposedly brought to life. Yes. <laughs> or it, I think of it as the killer bunny. But anyway, um, and that, that's very true. It's, it's, it's very hard. And it's all about when we get to the part of writing the business plan, it's not so much about what it is you're making. It's what you're trying to accomplish. And when you're trying to, to convey that information, you're now into the area of communication. And that's what basically your business plan is supposed to do. It's going to communicate to the VCs, to, the, to, to investors, to your, to, um, to your stakeholders, exactly what, what it is you're trying to do. And it has to be done in a credible way. There's three, re uh, three reasons for writing a business plan. And the one we're going to really concentrate on today is basically to raise money. Now, in my business, in my consulting firm, I also use a business plan as a management tool. It helps my clients focus their ideas. It helps them have a roadmap of where they're going in their business. So they're using it as an executable document. 
Um, it's a really good way to also see and, and, and test where your milestones are. So, but today we're just going to talk about your um, raising funds because that, that's basically what most people think of business plans are written for. But when you do have your, your companies, I encourage you to keep your business plan for a management tool too. So we know the why. Business plans come in uh, really, a, okay, a, a, just looking at my spelling there, a different, different format. So one is the concept paper, don't look at the spelling. The concept paper, which is done really at a, an earlier stage, it's a form of a business plan, but it's done at an early stage. You don't have all the information, and it's short. It's not long, it doesn't take too long, but you have to do all this, this research that you've been doing, gathering. And then you have the regular <coughs> written plan that we're familiar with, and there, that's usually around, and just give you a ballpark, 25, 30 pages, no more, because if you go beyond the 30 pages, nobody's going to read it. And you have an executive summary, which is usually at the first part of a written plan, and that's usually a page, two pages. And then, of course, you have your, uh, your pitch, uh, your presentation that you'll use. And at different times during your communication, you'll be using these. Very often, when you're in a networking situation or you, you're trying to make that first contact, you'll do some elevator-type pitch, which is an abbreviated form. Then you may, the, the investor, the angel investor, or the VC will say, well, send me your executive summary. You'll send an executive summary. Then somewhere in there they'll say, oh, they, yeah, this doesn't look too much like Frankenstein. Hmm? Oh. Okay. Doesn't look too much like, you get me offside here. Um, send me your written plan. And then you'll go into, so you keep going. But. When I graduated, I did my first business plan, and the first thing I did was I ran out and I bought me a book. I thought, this book is going to tell me how to write the best business plan. You know, I, I open it up and I go, hey, it even gives me an outline. I can follow the outline and tell me all the stuff. Well, I, now with technology, I can go and get software package. That, that's really fantastic. Well, it's an excellent, excellent resource to help you find where to find information. It helps you to maybe think about some of your marketing plan situations. You may have forgotten because you've been out of business school for a little while. And you may have forgotten what you were taught in marketing class. So it's a resource. But how most of these business plan books will tell you is that you start off on the first page and you start off by saying, my company is summer enterprises and I was incorporated in 1998 in Delaware and I sit there and I've read business plans Rick White has had me on the business plan review committee for many years and that's why are you starting off by telling me that I want to know straight off the bat why you're what it is you're trying to accomplish what's the market size how you're going to do it you know, and, and bring that all the way around. So I want to hear the story of the problem of the pain. And I, I talk about the pain in the marketplace. Now, has anybody here hear, you heard that term before? The pain in the marketplace? Yeah? Okay, so um, it's, to me it's more, more than just saying there's a need in the marketplace. It really has to be a, a big pain in the marketplace. And the best way to sort of get that a, across is by telling a story. Most things that you, you remember in your life is always revolving around a story. It's no different than this. And with the competition out there for, uh, for, for trying to get money, the thing you want to do is you want to grab the attention of whoever's reading that, read it fast so they get the whole idea right there. They'll worry about how you're incorporated and all your other financial stuff a little bit later, but you want to grab them first because they're going to usually read that, and then as Philip will tell you later, then they go, you don't go to the next page, and then you jump to some other part of the plan. So you want to grab them first. So the story format is, is a, a way of communicating so you can get your desired, <coughs> it evokes a desired emotion so you can connect with the person that's reading. And it's very important when you write your plan that you know who it is you're writing it for. Are you writing it for a bank to get some bank money? 
Are you writing it for an angel group? Or are you writing it for a VC? Because each one of those audiences have different little areas of interest. Um, you also want to make sure when you do submit your plan that you're submitting it to the, to the right people. If you're a biotech company, you don't want to submit it to a, an investor that their sweet spot is uh, software. Uh, so you want to make sure that you target your, your business plan. The business plan told as a story can also help develop, build trust and credibility because it'll show as you develop the story and the storyline through, through the plan, you really get a sense of, you know, hey, this person is thinking logically. They have the things in the right place. They know what is important. They have the, uh, their um, board is, is there and it's, everything has fallen in place. And, it's, and it builds a strong platform to be able to present your facts. So I throw this diagram up to, to stress the fact this is a story. It's an evolving thing. And I, 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 in my presentations, have three underlying stories of your business. And I have this first one is the story of the technology for those researchers that are out there because it's, it starts even earlier on. And many people think, and then you have the story of the business plan and the funding, and many people think um, that it's a sequential thing, that you have to finish the technology story first, then start the business plan part, and then the funding story. And, and I think in, in times like today, it's important that the researcher, even in this early idea and technology feasibility in the invention part, start thinking, what about the market? Is there a market for what I'm trying to do? Not necessarily to have the research driven by the market, because there is some things out there that are done for research and research sake, and, that, and, and that's fine. But I'm talking about the things that are trying to get product or services into the market. So there's, that's what the dotted lines are for. So you should be thinking about these things all along. Um, for instance, like in the business plan, when you're starting to do your marketing, you, you may want to start thinking about your research and your concept and your, when you do market strategy, what kinds of funding is there that matches what I'm doing? And so you start thinking about them before you're going to need it, so you can plan. And a business plan basically answers just three basic questions. Is this opportunity interesting? Is the business a credible business? And is this investment attractive? And when I say investment attra is attractive, it's not only investment of money, but it's investment of, of human resources. So it's other types of investment, but it has to be an attractive thing. Now this is a document that was developed um, while I was with the Business Plan Review Committee. And it was one of our tools that we use to review business plans. And actually, it provides, and I use it today when I have to write business plans or I help facilitate business plan writing of some of my clients, I use that as my outline. And, I, and it and it's broken down and it answers each one of those three questions. And there is an expanded version of this will be online, so you can see it even in an expanded version. This is just a summary version. And we could go into it a little bit more. So the first question, how we answer that first question. You answer that first question, is the opportunity interesting, by identifying what the pain is in the marketplace. Is it there? Then tell me what your solution is, you know, and why you are the best one to be, to be giving that solution out. Are you positioned well? Do you have the right technology there? Is, is your um, expertise in that area? What are, what are the resources that you have? And then tell me about your customers. And when I mentioned talking about the customers, I'm talking about actually envisioning yourself walking in your customer's shoes. Because now when you're writing this business plan, you don't write the business plan from the standpoint of the researcher. You're writing the business plan really from the standpoint of the customer that you're trying to serve. What do the customer want? What does the customer need? How are you going to serve the customer? And you want to make sure that that customer base is large enough. Um, so and then you're going to tell me all that you know about the market. How big is the market? What does the market look like? What are the market trends? Um, and you're going to also need to talk about your competition 
And one thing I hear often is that, oh, there's nobody out there that I compete with. I'm the only one out there. Well, that's not true. And anybody who thinks that's true needs to go back and do something else because there's always a competitor somewhere because in the, in the marketplace, if there's a need, most likely that need is being met some way, somehow. It may not be the best way, but it's being met somehow. And, and your solution has to be better, quicker, cheaper, or whatever the reason is, but it has to be better than whatever it is they are doing right now to solve their problem. So there is a, a, a competition. In. And a good place here is to use a, chart, a competitor chart, which is save space in your business plan so you have room for more words, actually. So is this business credible? Well, this is the part where you, you really have to build the story to, to show the person that's reading it that, yeah, I, I'm the one that can do this. I, I really can pull this off. I've got the management expertise. I've got the, the resources. I have my plan. How am I going to get it to, to market? I have my sales strategy figured out. And I have the internal structure. Um, now, when I say some of these things, as an early stage company, you may not have the resources to have all these things necessarily totally 100% in place. That's okay. I want to know that you know that they're supposed to be in place and that you've got a plan and you know what the triggers are when certain things are supposed to happen. And especially this comes in, in handy with um, staffing issues. I like to see an org chart that has not only the people that are there with you now, but what are the, vac the places that are going to be filled later on and when and how and what type of person you might even be wanting to fill some of those. So I want to see that you're, think you're looking out several years. And then your management team, because nobody can do this on their own. There's always somebody, you need somebody to help you do this. There's only 24 hours in a day, seven days a week, and and 52 weeks in a year, and you can't do it by yourself. But I don't necessarily want to see that you have your uncles and your brothers and your sisters and you know relatives all on your management team unless they are qualified, very qualified, to be in those positions. <coughs> and then we have our financials. And Rick spoke very nicely about the, the typical finances that you will see in, in your business plan, and that's going to be your balance sheet, your ca cash flows, um, income statement um, and assumptions. I've seen several business plans just recently where they have all the nice financials and then they don't put any of their assumptions in there. And I, I you know, I'd like to know what they, what their assumptions are based on. Were they just pulling numbers out of the air? Or are they based on something very reliable and realistic, and some rationale to them? And then. Is this investment attractive? This is where you're going to start talking about how you're going to fund your company. And there's lots of different ways, and I'm not going to talk too much about that because Philip's got a wonderful presentation to tell you about that too. And, and also an exit strategy. And we've talked a little bit about exit strategies in the earlier sessions. Um, a lot of people, when they're writing their business plan, they don't want to think at an exit. And usually um, that part of the business plan is usually a little weak because when they don't understand how, it, how they're supposed to exit, they don't know the timing of the exit. But it's important, especially <coughs> from an investor's standpoint, that you know what an exit is, where it's going to be, because that's usually that's where they're going to get their payout. This is a document that I've used. Um, in fact, I, I just started with a new client that's writing a business plan and has no experience in how to put it together. And she asked me if I would write the business plan, and I said no. Um, because I'm a firm believer that if you can't write your own business plan, then how are you going to run your own company? Now, th I'm not saying that you have to be a, an incredibly great writer. Now, granted, it has to be written very well before you give it to um, someone else to read. But 
I always require that you write at least the first couple of drafts yourself because it's very important. It's a process of writing the plan. You, you build, you're gathering all this information and you're putting it in a document. It's forcing you to focus on what your business is about. It focuses you on all the different elements of the business, how one part of the business, if something happens, how it cascades down to the other part of your business. So you really, as the president, the CEO, need to understand every single aspect. You don't have to be a CPA to do that. You can call Rick and he'll help you figure out what the numbers. I do that all the time. Or you don't need to be a legal expert. You call your legal people to help you with you know, understanding stuff. But you, you have to have a very strong basic understanding. The business plan helps you do this, especially if you're writing it as a story. The reason that is is because as you're writing like a, a novel, the pain, the story, the thread is, is woven all the way through from the beginning through the marketing. You see it and it, it shows you how everything connects. If you follow what's in these books, you're answering questions and there's never a connection between one section and the other. You're just answering individual questions. And, and I think, and um, Rick you can, and Philip, you, we can tell a, a business plan that's been written straight from a book and they've only, had their, only been answering questions and not really had a lot of thought of how the whole thing is an integrated process. But I use this, and what it is, it's a, for each one of those sections which follows the outline of a business plan, and I would suggest that if you do use this, that you don't call your first section the pain, call it the introduction, call it something else, but I, I keep it up there so it keeps me sort of, I know where I am, until the last draft and then I change it. <laughs> What you do is you make one sentence for each one of those sections. Now, you may say, that's impossible. I can't do that. Well, actually, I have a client that did that for me because she knew I was having this class. And I said, gee, would you please do one for me? And she actually did it. She, um, it's a, a, um, a device company, medical device company. And she managed to do, it took her two hours, but she got it down to one sentence for each one of those sections. And it was really an, a, a good exercise for her because it really made her focus in on what she really wanted to do. It also made her focus in on making sure that every word was used purposefully. No extra us, uh, this is that, you know, really use them well. And when she ended up doing her business plan, she used that almost as a guideline. Now things changed because as she, she, she found other, other pieces of information to the puzzle, because it's a puzzle that you're putting together, she changed a few things, but it still it kept her focused on what the end game was and, and, and where the pain was. So that's a, a real interesting little tool to use, and um, it'll be on, on the internet so you can copy. There's nothing rocket science about it. But I, I, I do suggest that people start with something like this because it really sort of helps keep you focused. Let's see. And I want you to remember, it's really important. If you can't identify the appropriate pain in the marketplace, then your solution really doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. You can have the best in, um, invention in town, but you know, if there's not enough pain in the, or the market's not large enough, you're not going to be able to make enough money to make it pay off and nobody will buy it. And it's really not the technology, but it's the value to the customer that's important. And I know this, that's a hard concept for some of the engineers in the audience and the technology people in the audience, but it's true. It's all about what the customer wants. Once you get past your idea, it's all about meeting the customer's need. And, and if you keep your customers happy, a lot of the, the things that keep you up at night when you have your business won't, will go away. Because if you have a happy customer, they keep coming back, they buy more, and then money goes up. So. And another final thought. You've gotten to the point where you've written this lovely business plan, you've sent it to an investor, and you've gotten some money, and now you put the business plan on the shelf. Without the execution that brings the product or service to the market, 
the model that you have doesn't make any doesn't make any sense. And a lot of a lot of um, business people will have that that have that beautiful plan, great idea, great product, and where they fall down is on execution. And that's where the business plan comes into effect after you've gotten the money. And that's why I said there's another role of a business plan as a management tool. The, the business plan will help you keep on track. It'll help you remember what it is you're supposed to do when, where, because as the leader of your company, there are so many things you have to remember. It's good to have a business plan to act as the, the road map. That is it. Do I have any questions? No questions? You're all ready to, oh, yes? Um, the market. This is something I, I get ideas popping in my head all the time. I'm like, OK, it sounds like a great idea to me. <laughs> what are some of the recommendations you give to your client to figure out the market? How do you figure <laughs> out the market? Let's <laughs> like some recommendations. I, you can, I can hypothesize ways, but what do you tell your client? When they're trying to figure out exactly where their market is, lots of times where they think their market is isn't really where it, it is. Um, and I've had that situation where I've had to really change them. Basically, I have them go and where they think the market is, go and start making phone calls and finding out, you know, this is what I'm doing, you know, do a little a survey, market survey. I'm having one of my clients actually do a, a monkey survey, sending out to who she thinks is her main target market, and find out what, what it is they want, where, where they shop, where they are. Now, some people have trouble, well, how do I know? Well, you know, identify who, your customer, who you think your customer is. And you can get a lot of that information from the census. For instance, there was a, a client that I had that um, was in a, had developed a board game. And she thought it should be marketed in toy stores. Well, it was really an adult game. So I said, well, why don't you go to some of the coffee shops? Because when you describe who, if you described and paint a picture of who your customer were, they were the coffee drinkers, the people that go and sit down and drink coffee. And so she was able to place her product in coffee shops rather than putting it in a toy store. So that's why it's important to sort of figure out um, who your customer is. Where, you know, how much money do they typically make? You know, where do they live? Where do they shop? What do they do every day? And that's what I mean by walking in their shoes. Because you're building a product, but you're thinking of it from the, the inventor side or the, the, the entrepreneur side and not the customer that's actually paying your money. And then once you sort of figure that out, then you can start to figure, well, gee, well, there's so many coffee drinkers in the world, and there's so many, you know, you can start backing into it. Um, there, I have another client that was having trouble figuring out who her market was. You know, her, his market was. This was a guy. And um, there was no really direct inf information, but his product was dependent upon another product being in place. So I said, that company is a much bigger company building that machine. Find out how many of those machines that company sells, and if you can find some sales figures, because it was a bigger one, and then use that as a way to figure out and size her market, <coughs> his market. So there's lots of different ways. You have to really think out of the box.